What is up YouTube? I'm so excited right now. Are you excited? Yeah! Where are we going? Stripper fishing! <laughs> you mean striper fishing? Yeah, striper fishing! <laughs> Woo! I'm Chris Blanchard. You're watching The Bite. Guys, we just pulled up to the river and the tide's not moving very fast it's actually looking really nice and there's a little spot where there's kind of a fire already made right here we might just back up right here and there's this little um, culvert right here I remember someone saying something right by the culvert was a good thing so I found this culvert I heard someone talking about there's a little fire pit see the water's looking gorgeous nice and still there's a little boat sitting up there they're also bottom fishing a bit so Hopefully we can't get into some fish. I'm gonna get everything set up. And check back in. So you guys, I'm gonna sit here and get some of my gear together real quick. So something that I found that's really convenient. I really, really like having two spools for one reel. I'm able to switch between this 30 pound braid and that 15 pound mono really, really easily, which is nice if you're gonna be switching between fishing for um, steelhead or medium size freshwater fish that you might wanna have just like some 12 pound mono on and then upgrading to fishing off of the jetty or fishing um, here for some of these big stripers or something where you might want to have a little bit beefier line but still be able to get the same casting quality where I upgrade to a braid. I like my boxes. I'm a box person. Box inside of a box keeps things organized even though I actually never keep any of my things organized despite how hard I try. You always want to look for scuffs in your line. See that little scuff right there? I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's pretty frayed out. And I'm going to go ahead and strip off a few feet of my line here, because that's going to be the stuff that was getting the most use in abrasion. Just, again, my knife's over there, but I'll just cut it off with this later. It's funny, I'm a knife guy. I have so many knives. I sometimes am carrying too many knives around with me. But it seems like every time I'm fishing lately, I don't have a solid knife with me, which is just kind of... So there's a variety of names for this type of rig. People like to call it a fish finding rig. People will call it a sliding rig. It's pretty simple. So I just got my sliding set up together. I went with one of these weight slides. These ones are weird and the, the clip doesn't undo, it's just to drop a line off of it. So I stuck a little snap swivel on there. I went with a three ounce 
disc sinker. I think that's going to sit on the bottom and drag a little bit in the sand um, with this moving current. And um, if that doesn't hold, I'll switch up to a pyramid or something. Um, sometimes we use cannonballs, but the cannonballs kind of roll with the current a little bit. Then I just went to a swivel. I have 25 pound test mono, maybe two and a half feet, almost three feet. Um, it's a little bit long. You could probably just stick it right around two feet, but this one's all right. And I came up to a size three red Gamagatsu octopus light. And I'm gonna stick a piece of scat or shad on there. And we're gonna get to fishing, so. What happens is the weeds pile up on your line and it creates all that weight. You can kind of picture, you know, a string tied to one point, tied to another, and if a bunch of weights, weeds build up in the middle and tug on it, it's gonna create a big bow in it. So as that bow gets bigger, it adds more and more and more weight and more and more tension, and then it just starts to drag your weight and line downstream until your weight and your bait get really pretty far away from you, and then that big ball of seaweed just piles up onto it. So every 10 or 15 minutes, I'm having to pull lines in right now and rebait them and good weather all week of course I picked one day of the next few days that it's supposed to be sunny but it's choosing to not be so salad all day long. Still got a little piece of fish on there. Looks like it might have been chewed on a little bit. Oh you guys have never seen this before. Look at how many cormorants there are. Like I've seen cormorants before you know but that's that's quite a quite a little pack of them. They have to be following food, right? There's so many of them. You don't get a hundred cormorants all hanging out in one spot without a reason. Look, that one's got something in its mouth. And they're all chasing it. Wild. And then look, there's some egrets over there too. The white ones that you see hanging out with cattle. I think that the the river birds, like the, those are um, maybe a little bit different than the ones you see sitting on cattle, even though they look exactly the same. I could be wrong. You guys might know. But these are more like um, like a white herring or like, a, um, like, oh yeah, look, there's a couple of big blue herons with them too. Wow, what's going on? There's a huge flock of herons. These white, these white, um, these white birds that are kind of like egrets. Yeah, look, there's a bunch of great herons and then like a hundred cormorants all just mobbing together. And there's a couple down the bank over here too. It looks like it's actually about slack tide right now, which is also a good thing. They all just kind of came in to hang out right here for slack tide, which kind of makes sense, but why right here? You know, they, the, it's gonna be high tide everywhere right about now. So it's not like they're just following the tide or something. Well, there all the cormorants go, but it looks like the herons and the, um, egrets white herons whatever they are are all still hanging out here they look like egrets and i would say that they are egrets except for somebody once told me that the birds you see hanging out both the cows those are the egrets and the white ones that you see on the water there's something different that just look kind of similar so how cool is that though look here's a couple more flying over awesome well since it is about that tide, I'm going to put fresh baits out, make sure that what we've got out is looking scrumptious. 
So I'm going to stick some fresh bait on and try to get it as far out there in front of me as I can. I think the biggest thing when it comes to um, chunk bait fishing like this, if you're going to ever fish with pieces of fish, is you want that bait to be really, really fresh. The um, idea that um, bait or crab bait or anything like that is better when it's rotted for a little bit is totally not true. They want the freshest, bombest meat they can get. That rot is something they don't like just as much as you don't like it. So. Well, while I sit here and wait, I think I'm going to just post up oops, in the van for a bit uh, and watch a movie. Whoa! So I've done this intro like four times now. We found this one guy. You know that guy. Hey. I'm not gonna say his name because when I did it, it shut off. Every time he says my name, <laughs> that cam shuts off for some reason. But him and Sage made a fire down there. Sage, you wanna help me make the fire so we can get some food going? Yeah. All right, sounds like fun here. Why don't you put this in the bottom of the pit and then stack these on it, kind of like a little pyramid, you know what I mean? All the way around it. Sun stick it up. You see this? Put that on fire. Get all on fire. Let it roast right there. Put it in here. Put it, get, let it roast. And put it over in different spots. Until it gets on fire. See? It's on fire, bro. It's on fire. Now, you better be in attention or this will go right up the stick. Bam. <laughs> get fire on your hand. That'll be bad. So just remember that metal on that hot dog is hot. I know. I just burnt the heck out of myself. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Well, don't eat it off that, maybe. <laughs> Look, that smoke's following you. Really? It really likes you. He's running from it. It's actually not raining right now, but it's been pretty sprinkly and it wasn't supposed to be. The weather was going to be nice all weekend, but that's how Oregon is. Uh, we're just going to do what we can. And if it starts dumping rain, we're just going to keep fishing. I mean, we're going to get wet tonight. If Sage has to uh, get soaking wet and then get into his nice little, nice little bed right here, a little Spider-Man zone, so be it. So we're going to, we're going to smash him hard tonight. Oh, well, I got to get into here. What's up guys? I'm gonna make a little Riverside yakisoba at any of your um, like Asian markets um, or whatever your local grocery store is, we'll have them. But you can definitely get them at your Asian markets are these fresh yakisoba noodles. And it's really nice to be able to just throw them straight into a wok with some oil and some veggies and a little chicken or something like that. And then have instant noodles on the beach. So we're gonna do that tonight and I'm gonna dig out whatever kind of goodies I have in here. Um, we've got those noodles, I got some bean sprouts, some carrots, some celery. Oh, Chris's rod is, oh, oh, is it moving? Oh, it's just a bunch of weeds. So it's gonna be a pretty simple preparation. There's nothing real fancy about instant yakisoba noodles, but um, it's just kind of a fun idea um, to be able to do camping or for an instant meal or something like that. And so I brought out a batch of them to be able to whip up for us and kids love it. So Sage was like, I don't know what that is. I don't like it. And then he was like, teriyaki chicken noodles? Yeah. So we're gonna do that. So you don't need one of these little gadgets. Um, a knife will work fine, especially if you have a good cutting board and a good knife. But this is kind of a cool little gadget. It looks like a peeler, but it's not. If you see in there, it's actually got little teeth, kind of like a mandolin would or something like that. So when I take one of these carrots, it's gonna go straight into these little strips. So I can just take this right down the side of my carrot and just get these Cool little carrot spears instantly. So we're just gonna go like this. Make it 
get as many of them as we can real quick. This is interesting. I've never really seen this before. Maybe on straight farm fresh celery, but this is the bottom of the celery stock where all the little ones are coming off of it. It's kind of cool. We're just going to throw these in all big like this. And never would, would get that and be like what is this and then have it be celery maybe you would but you wouldn't expect it so right here i just have some chunks of chicken thigh all chopped up they're still a little bit frozen but they're going to thaw like this i covered them in a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper and i'm just going to throw some sesame oil and a little bit of liquid smoke and a little bit of powdered ginger on them as kind of a um, marinade of sorts and it's going to give them just a little bit of flavor when we do um, fry them off. I think I have some brown sugar in there. I'll add a little bit of brown sugar and all of that stuff together will probably give it a little bit of a teriyaki-ish um, flavor. So we'll see what happens. Just digging out of the random spices in the back of the van. So we're just going to take some of this oil and this wok down to that fire and get it hot. Let's go. All right, guys, so we've got our fire going here, and it's actually super, super hot. Um, these two logs are kind of wedged out, and in the middle, there's a pit just full of coals, and it is raging. It's almost um, hotter than I would want it to be. So the wok's gonna sit pretty nicely right up in here. Maybe we'll take this rock, and we'll set it back here. Just be another little bit of a holder. Yeah, so the wok's gonna just sit perfect right there. And I'm just gonna add this oil. Um, when cooking at super high temperatures with oil, you want to be careful because when this oil sizzles, it's going to um, cause some water to evaporate a little bit. Like if I threw some vinegar, some alcohol in here especially, and when that stuff all kind of vaporizes, it becomes really flammable. And if it lights up, this could then light up, and then all of a sudden you've got like a raging oil fire in your hands. See how hot this is already getting? This is just going to be fired up. So. Can even set it to the side a little bit and just let it heat up like that. Hooey! So I'm just going to throw veggies in right now, and the veggies probably aren't going to cause it to to flare up too much. You can see them frying a little bit right away. But if I um, was going to add uh, much more liquids and stuff like that, you want to pull the oil away from the fire a little bit like out out to the distance then at least it's not going to sizzle up right over the flame and that open flame source is really what's going to cause um, the rest of your oil to ignite so we're going to get that stuff in there with some carrots and some celery green beans obviously onions green onions um, red bell pepper, other types of peppers, all that kind of stuff is really good in um, a stir fry or a yakisoba or anything like that. But I didn't have all that. I just had some celery and some carrots laying around. So that's what we added to the mix. No, not yet. So we're just gonna add all that chicken in. Throw that bowl off the side because we're done with it. I'm really getting this chicken down into the center of that fiery section is really what we want to do. I'm going to add just a little sesame oil to our whole mix to give it some flavor. And it's going to be really pretty oily right now while it all cooks. But when we add those noodles, they're going to fry in that and they're going to soak up a whole bunch of that oil and they're going to give us our fried noodle effect. That would be a good time to clean it, I Thank you. 
And when we throw a little bit of vinegar in the mix, That's the reaction between that vinegar and that hot oil. A lot of this is juice and ice from the chicken and from the veggies. Some of it's those different oils and some of it is that vinegar. And as it all cooks down, You get that cool flambe effect. Flambe is with alcohol or rum or something, but you know what I mean. Giant, giant flaming saute pan. All right, I think we're gonna add our noodles. I'm looking forward to this part. I put a decent bit of salt in there, but obviously traditionally soy sauce. would be what you would want to salt this type of a dish with. This is really not going to be um, any kind of traditional yakisoba. It's just going to be some some noodley noodley bomb. I would also recommend having something on hand like sriracha or some other kind of hot sauce because it goes a really long way with something like this. And then adding all these bean sprouts. Now the bean sprouts don't need to cook for very long. You could add them fresh. So I don't know if you guys saw the end of me cooking up the noodles. But I was down there uh, messing around and then I looked up and the camera was off. So maybe it got me, maybe it didn't. But here is our amazing yaki soba like thing, maki soba. And we're going to throw down. So we're hanging out at low tide for a bit, just letting our line soak. Um, really, I think better fishing is incoming tide and high tide slack. High tide slack is going to be at like midnight or something. So. We got a little fire going, roasted some dogs, made some s'mores, and uh, we're just hanging out. It's real nice and calm. The fog, there's something real just trippy and beautiful about the fog. It feels, feels majestic, like maybe a dragon might just come up over the hill or something. I mean, I know one's not, but it'd be kind of cool if one did. Thanks, bud. Keep reeling. Keep reeling, dude. Here, keep on reeling in here. Walk down this way with me. Walk down the hill right here. Keep on reeling, don't stop. Keep your rod tip high. Okay, all the way down this way, bud. Keep reeling, rod tip high. Keep tension, pull up, pull up. Okay, you can stop for a second. Stop right there and pull up and keep reeling hard. Yeah, keep going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you need to walk this way, you can walk this way. Come on down here a little bit closer. Yep, just stay right there and keep reeling. P -p pull your rod tip over here if you can. Yeah, like that, there you go, bud, perfect. Good job, dude. 
Here he comes. Look. Looks like a little five. See right here, Sage? You want to bring him right into this little pocket right of water here on this side of the rock. So bring the rod up over this way. Over this way. Towards me. There you go. Oh, oh. Lift up, lift up. Lift up. Yeah. 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 Got him. You did it. Get him up here. Nice little. <laughs> A little five pounder. Big one. Look at that, Sage. Wow. Is that your first striped bass, Sage? First striper. Oh, nah, you can take your rod down right there. Come here. I bet you that fish is a pound for every uh, year you are old, Sage. How old are you, Sage? Five. How, Five. how many pounds do you think that fish is? Twenty. Right. <laughs> Got it right here. Here, Sage. Yeah, there you go. You always wanted to use this thing. Ow. Here, go ahead and okay. go ahead and put the hook inside the gills right there, like you wanted. Like you wanted to. I'll hold the net right here. Go ahead, lift him up high. Look at him. You got one, buddy. And he's the perfect eating size, I think. How fun was that? Good. Did you fight? Did you fight hard? Yes. Did he? Did he almost beat you at any time? Yeah, he almost blocked me in the water. He almost got you in the water. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's get another one, dude. Okay. All right. Got it. All right, dude, pound it. All right. Nah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. All right. Yeah, you take that. Yeah, I'll take this sharp thing. Good job, buddy. Yeah, let's go check your fish out up there, right? Whoa, be careful up here, bud. There's a good one, guys. Like right when you put it down, it's going this way. Show me. So put that down. <laughs> Dude, you got first one on your first trip. First. Nobody gets a sprint or a striper on their first trip. Oh man, here, you hold him. Hold it down a little bit so we can see your face. Talk us through what happened, man. I just caught this big bass and now we're striper bass, actually. <laughs> and. How much do you think it weighs? 20 and 20 inches. <laughs> 20 actually, and it probably is 22 inches or 24 inches, maybe. But uh, it's probably around five, four to five pounds. Yes. How did it almost, I mean, what happened? Tell us what happened. I almost fell in the water. What? Well, you almost fell in the water? Yeah. It was fighting good though, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's all killed right here. Yeah. What else? Talk away. I'll let him tell you all about it. It's all spiky right on the top, but it gets down. And he has this tail right here. It's all spiky, kind of. It's all gilled. Oh! Fell out of my hand. He's all slippery. Pick them up. We just caught this and we're gonna use it to what kind eat of fish is it say? and a striper bass. <laughs> Your first one ever, huh? Yep. I can't believe it. First trip out, right? Yeah. Keep talking. You can talk all you want. We're not even listening. I'm done. You're done? Yeah, okay. it's really heavy. I'll do one real quick. You wanna stand next to me? Yeah. Look what Sage just reeled in. That thing's gotta be uh Close to five pounds. Yeah. Nice little striped bass right there. That's gonna be a perfect eating size, the way I see it, right? Yeah. But anyway, first catch of the night. We're just getting started. So you guys you know we've been doing this channel for about three months now uh, maybe three and a half or something like that um, we've been putting out as much content as we can we've experimented a little bit on different types of content and it seems like um, just us going out and going fishing and um, cooking some cool meals is really the stuff that you like to see um, the shut up and fishes are awesome the uh, bites best moments are awesome people really seem to like those so we'll continue to pump that stuff out but I think we're gonna try to focus as much on just catching fish catching those big fish catching those hard to find fish and then cooking them up in cool ways and 
and exploring Oregon, exploring the West Coast, and exploring the world. So um, thanks for all your support. Thanks for being part of the bike family and the channel. And yeah. thanks for watching. If you'd like to uh, support the channel in any way, the easiest thing that you can do that's like the most low impact on you is to just hit the little thumbs up like button, hit the little subscribe button, turn your notifications on, and that will uh, move us up in the algorithm. It helps us get to other channels, helps us spread our um, information faster. Once we get enough views up, we start making a little bit more money off of it, and it takes nothing from you, just click it a couple of times. If you want to support us more, there's a Patreon that we're getting set up to allow the um, viewers to throw us some dollars here and there to get our camera equipment up, get our gear up, um, and just keep on doing the channel. Right now, we're not making any money off of any of this. We're just dumping money into it. It's just me and Chris, two GoPros and a couple of laptops. And that, that's... Those bells are real handy when you're sitting here night fishing. But also know that you guys don't have to give us anything. We're gonna be still be doing this. We're still gonna be putting out as much content as possible until these cameras die. But it does help out a lot, just anything at all. Yep. It, that's you. Oh, oh, that's me. That's definitely going on. Hang on. Hold up. Because <laughs> when he takes it, he's gotta jump that way. Oh yeah, that's a bite. That's a bite for sure. Oh, what's that? Is it on there already? I don't know, but I got a fish. All right, here. then we can follow him a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a big pike minnow. That is a huge pike minnow. Wait till you see this monster pike minnow he just got. <laughs> it's almost as big as a striper. Look at that thing. Wow, dude, what that thing's gotta be like 22 inches. No, dude, it's a pike minnow. Look at the size of this thing. That is a trophy that pike a, that's minnow. A trophy pike minnow, right I would there, claim. Guys. If you caught that thing on the Columbia, it'd be worth ten bucks. No problem. You yeah. Got for bait. What? We are. You know what? We could probably rig this thing up and troll it out <laughs> at sea. And oh man, something. <laughs> that is a big pike. That is a beast gonna, right there. Pull... Look at the size of his mouth, dude. Yeah, that thing can the... eat whatever it wants to. Yeah. Look at the size of that mouth. That predatory mouth. Wow. Dude. This is a really beautiful fish, but we are going to pull it from the river because pike minnows of this size are really the danger to the salmon steelhead fishery here. And that's why there's a bounty. That's why this fish would be worth eight to $10 wow, on the Columbia river, just cause it's one of these big giant beast of a ones. You can see that can fit a pretty decent sized fish inside of its mouth. And so, um, we're gonna go ahead and take it and use it for bait. They actually work pretty decent for bait because the smaller ones are what um, things around here are eaten. So they work great for crab bait. Probably work decent for striper bait if we chop it up, which we might do. I think it's probably gonna have really nice little fillets on it. Man, that thing is a bait, salmon steelhead that, eating machine. Yeah, that's a beast. That's right a good there. thing to get off the river. Yeah, Chris just hooked up. Heard this fish. Oh, baby. That was a good little run. Oh, buddy. Here, if you can. Okay, we got him out there. You chasing him? We might have to. Oh, go down. Is there anything? Here, the get bank. down right here. Fish him, try to fish him off that rock and bring him off the bank at least for now, you know what I'm saying? If you have to chase him, chase him, but just try to work him from there. I'm gonna get the other rod real quick, because the other rod is out and you're in, and you're in the zone of it. I am like tight against the bank, I don't know if I'm in. Come on, Sage. Take the net, take the net for a sec. guys you probably heard a bunch of that audio commotion us running around but anyway we uh we try to keep the fish in this zone you know obviously with lighting and stuff it makes it easier but the thing just beeline down the the bank this probably 50 yards down the way and i ended up getting underneath something i couldn't get out of it but i could see the fish kind of splashing beyond 
and there was just there's nothing we could have done unless somebody was standing down there but the uh the fish broke me off i was locked in uh it seemed like it was a decent fish so the fish are biting it's only going to get better from here i'm going to go get this one back out all right oh Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's a fish. That's a fish. That's you. Get it. Take it. It's all good. You can. No, oh, that's a fish. Take it. Is it? Yeah. It's a good fish. Let's see what it is. Finally, Asher. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Might be a striper. Oh, well, that's a good fish. Pike minnow bigger than that one. Oh man, that's a striper. See if I can make a another fish on. Feels a little bit bigger than that pike minnow, so if it's a if it's another pike minnow, it's Ooh. gonna be a big fish. It's a good, oh no. If that's a pike minnow, we gotta stay record here, boys. You got the net ready there? Yeah, try to be careful, but be quick if you can. Where do you wanna go with it? Wherever you want to go to, I'll bring it to you. Um, we could probably go right in front of you there. Looks like it has water too under right it. Yeah. Let me, uh... Ooh, baby. Another seven pounder. Look here, son. A little bigger than yours. That's it's, it's no redemption to the uh, fish that's, I caught on his rod, but that's fine. we got another one, boys. Yeah, yeah. boy. That's a more like a seven, huh? Yeah. Maybe six, yeah, but. So the big one that we caught last time was on my rod because I was down here slacking off. But this time Chris was down here hanging out with his kid. I don't know if that's exactly slacking off. So I grabbed <laughs> his rod. <laughs> Can I go down there with this camera? Yeah, here, come right down here. Be careful. Okay. Look at this beautiful fish right here. Super clean. Look at how all of its fins are just pristine. You see us catch, um, you know, trout and carp and even that pike minnow earlier that are just all beat up because they've just been getting beat up by other fish or going up and down the rocks or something like that. But just look at how perfect and clean and pristine this fish looks like. You know, no, no one's been messing so with right. him. He's just a beast. Look at these spikes. So, yeah, look at Boom. those spikes. What an awesome striped bass. This one probably is a good baby. Seven pounds. That's a real yeah. fun fish. Good fish. Yeah, stoked. Perfect on that. eating size right there. Yeah, perfect eating size. Good little redemption fish. I knew that I was gonna catch one on one of Chris's rods because he got that nice big one on mine. <laughs> so this one now we're even and uh the next fish that hits hit his pole, he can go ahead and take himself. So <laughs> um I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy down so that he's not um suffering anymore. And we're gonna take him home and put fillets in the freezer. I'm looking forward to some striped bass. So we'll probably do a cook with this. Maybe this whole thing will turn into a catch and cook. And uh, yeah, super stoked. fun, super stoked on that. Um, number two. Number two. Yeah! <laughs> Hit that sub button. It's gonna toss me. No, it's perfect, dude. All right. Is this my fish? No, this one's mine. <laughs> you wish. No. So super, super fun. Nice, uh, probably seven pound, 25 inch striped bass. Um, it's a great way to spend the evening. We're gonna try to get into a couple of more, but even if we just catch this one and the one that Sage caught, um, I think we're gonna be stoked. I see the Here's the one that Sage caught right here. Go ahead and just hold it right there for yeah, a second. Hold it real bud. quick like that. And Here's the one that I got, just a little bit bigger, which is appropriate. I'm just a little bit bigger. You Here, look at I mean? me real quick. Look Asher me. size fish, look sage, me, sage size fish. Smile, Sage. We're real happy about that. So, Stoked. Stoked. this is the first time we've gotten two in one night, oh, also, guys. Oh, oh, man. Super, super fun. That's one. That's two. You're watching the bite. Yeah, you're watching the bite. All right, you guys, so the key to making a great s'more 
is taking your chocolate, getting it on your graham crack cracker, and roasting it just close enough to the fire. You can get that chocolate to melt down on your graham cracker, but not ooze all over the place while you're roasting your marshmallows. They started to get nice and brown and gooey, and they were going to fall right off, so I'm just setting them on here. That chocolate has already been melted in there. See, look, the chocolate just melted right off and it's all over the tip of this. Smash this next piece of graham cracker in there. Ooh, that looks like essentially perfect spot. So melted. <laughs> S'mores ain't clean. <laughs> Put your marshmallows on the fire, but I don't really like mine burnt, but that's burnt. Asher doesn't like his burnt either. <laughs> he accidentally got them on fire. You don't shake them. That's for sure. <laughs>